agriculture is encountered by multifaceted challenges from land degradation and global climate change. Erratic temperatures, drought, shallow soil, soil salinity, hailstorms, and many more have become a real challenge to deal with. To face the challenge head on, our nation felt the need for a dedicated research institute on abiotic stress management. The National Institute of Abiotic Stress Management, or NIAM, is a unique, one-of-its-kind institute that was born out of this express need. In 2009, then Union Minister of Agriculture, Sharad Pawar, laid the foundation stone for the institute at Baramati, Pune. The site that was chosen for the institute had very shallow and poorly developed Murram soil with parental basaltic rock which was typical to the Deccan region. A hydrological survey of the site revealed that there was no groundwater. Moreover, rainfall was erratic and about 560 millimeters annually. Our country has approximately 26.5 million hectare of similar rocky, barren, shallow and uncultivable land which is around 8% of our total geographical area. The scientists at the institute took the rocky barren site as a challenge to convert it into opportunity. It sure was a mammoth task. The master plan of the institute envisaged a model research farm spread over an area of 41 hectares for demonstrating soil and water conservation technologies suited to the semi-arid climate of the region. The process began with generating a contour map for the surveyed area, taking into consideration the watersheds, natural drainage pattern and topography. In South Side Farm, research plots were generated in six longitudinal blocks having sizes of about 0.5 hectare and then bifurcated into subplots. Dozers with ripper attachments were used to break the weathered and non-weathered rock and murum fragments. The top, about one foot murum soil, was scrapped and collected separately. This was to be reused for top filling of terrace and subplots. This ripping was repeated two, three times till the plots and terraces got uniformly leveled. The hard rocky portions left behind were shattered by blasting. The pieces of rock scratched during the blasting were collected and used for road filling. The remaining material thus generated was again chained, ripped and pushed for leveling. Being in a sugarcane belt, acidic raw spent wash, a byproduct, was applied two times with an interval of 6 to 12 months in all the farm terraces and plots. This augmented the process of chemical breakdown and became base for microbes to flourish and further generated organic acids. Plowing and rotavating further helped to disintegrate the material into smaller pieces of sand and gravel. Leveling of top uneven murum surface of the farm plots was done for better irrigability of plots. Tencha was grown as a first crop but its performance was very poor. Thus, application of organic manure was resorted to to improve the soil health. Tencha performed better when grown for the second time and thereafter field experiments were initiated. Black soil was not natural to the plots designated. 
thus to diversify the soil type representative to the black soil of the area. Few plots were prepared by filling black soil. Once the land was developed into research farm, multidisciplinary teams of scientists are working together to address the issues of abiotic stress management. Due to scarcity of irrigation water, the western block of native marum soil has been put under Lucania and rain-fed crops like Marvel, Stylo and Anjan to verify the effect of crops on the rate of soil development. For conduct of research on fisheries, three ponds were constructed. The north side farm of about 15 hectares had about 4% slope. This was converted into different blocks, each having contour terraces, dividing the whole farm into 21 terrace plots. The process started by ripping to expose the bed, followed by blasting of the exposed bed and leveling. Big boulders were removed and contour shapes and buns were made. The north side farm of Niam has been dedicated to research on devising planting techniques, filling mixture for planting sites and exploring possibilities of deficit irrigation and partial root zone drying techniques. As Nira Canal is the only water source for the farm and to tackle preempting situations like canal closure and limited water supply, a balancing tank of capacity 15 million litres has been constructed. For field crops, PVC pipes were laid along the farm plots and for horticulture crops, drip irrigation systems were designed and installed. Farm roads were prepared using the boulders collected during ripping the field plots. Heavy stones were channeled and chained using a heavy dozer to create the bottom layer and topped up by a layer of murram soil. This activity not only reused 37,913 cubic meters of boulders and 7,612 cubic meters of murram worth 2 crore rupees for developing these farm roads but also saved a huge sum for disposing them off elsewhere. Fruit bearing species were chosen for peripheral plantation to generate additional income. Similarly, only low water requiring species were chosen for roadside plantations. All over the above, Niam anticipates to generate a revenue of more than 60 lakh rupees per year from the sale of farm produce. When I joined this institute, that was very unusual times. Uh, there were depression and depression among our colleagues because what we inherited was a barren patch of uh, rocky land. 
and simultaneously there existed hope and opportunities and thereby an agenda was set to convert this land into a model form where we can demonstrate our soil and water management technologies. I am proud of our achievements that what we have done during the past three years with the dedicated and hardworking efforts of our colleagues that we have been able to convert this land into one of the best planned experimental form for the researches on ad effects stresses with respect to the crops, horticulture and animal sciences including the fisheries. Now we have started working on the site specific technologies and thereafter we plan to go into networking mode with the regional, national and international institute. This has opened up a floodgate of opportunities, of understanding, experimenting on and mitigating multiple forms of abiotic stress and all of this within the four walls of one institute the National Institute of Abiotic Stress Management. The Institute is ready to take forward to find solutions for fragile ecosystems. That is a process that has already begun. All it needs now is to move ahead with confidence.